We're going to re-enable the sun, so let's open up the PBR fragment shader again. And now actually let's add the sun to this. Here we go, directional shadows are working again. But hey, what I said, we want to see that uh, lamp reflect in the, the foot over here and this lamp in the other foot. I think that's uh, happening at the moment. Overall it looks pretty good, I mean if you see the rendering of this, it's pretty convincing. So I don't think that this light is actually reflecting in the fighter, so let's add that as well. And that's in the light client light color provider. And then instead of just uh, doing the nice uh, thing, we do the same thing in the fast path. The nice path interpolates between eight values, the fast path interpolates between two values. But this code is just looking up one, and we already have the sample position, we already know our coordinate. So we can just copy over that code. This is actually the lantern right next to him. And just look at the way that the light falls on him. Check it out, it looks like he's actually standing there. Like the shading on his face, it's so good. 27 files changed, we can quickly just, uh, just like skim the changes that we did. So the cell coordinates, we changed these because we uh, wanted to have an is zero convenience method for making sure that we don't get empty uh, light origin values. This is a chunk light uh, data renderer. This is what converts the light values that we calculated. It stores those in the chunks. We make sure to now actually use the raw, the undithered data and use that for our comparison. We, we select the brightest light that we can find and we store its origin. Here's the chunk light value renderer. So this is what starts with a unlit world and then says, okay, here are lamps and then we flood out the light. So a light value tracker update, instead of having just the coordinate and the, the propagated light value, we now also propagate the light origin. So that's cool. Uh, next up, this is the chunk rendering thread. So this is what actually takes the chunks and uh, renders them to the uh, render buffers that we can show on screen. So this is done in the background. We render the chunks in the background, we display them interactively. So we made data structures here for the light origins array. In the cell data provider, we added the possibility to query light origin information. In the client chunks, we added storage for the light hole uh, origins. So there's a light hole around each chunk, like it's only the planes on the sides of the chunk so that we can leak this data outwards. And I'm pretty sure that we might actually remove this light hole origins thing, because I'm pretty sure that the same data is stored in this light data origins. Like we store the same data in the light data origins as we do in the light hole origins. Shall we just remove it right now? If we rename this back to light values, and we rename this light origins. So let's rename this light values. Let's remove the const. So this is actually the same function again. So we're, we're now trying to reduce the diff here. Get light origins, okay. So this entire file now disappears from the uh, version history thing because it's actually the same as it was on disk. Try to make the code do what you want and then you just reduce the entire diff based on uh, what you've learned. Light origins set and then the whole gone. Of course, we still need to check that it works. Check it out, there's a red reflection in it. This MOA, check it out, it's being lit by, from the bottom, check it out. It looks like a horror movie. Dun dun dun, lit from below. Dun dun dun. So let's review the diff some more, because it's easy to get lost in the visuals. We were at the client chunk, so we only added the light origins. It is a bit of a hefty data structure. Instead of like uh, using a cell coordinate, we can use a truncated version of that, because a light have the map away will never affect like a nearby cells. So maybe we should make a short coordinate uh, kind of thing if this turns out to be a bottleneck during execution. Vertex shader, we added the lighting direction. That's cool, lighting direction. And here the buffer lighting direction, we just pass it over to the fragment shader. That's entirely correct. In the light value tracker, we now track the light origins. I think these two variables are semantically grouped sort of. And this is just a different kind of data. So I'm not, I don't really want to remove this, this line in between in the light value tracker. This is uh, basically what we did. This is uh, actually what we wanted to do today. So if we are updating the light value for a certain grid point or a cell in the grid, um, we now assign an origin for that as well, where the light is coming from. So that's looking good. And model vertices, so this is what gets rendered by the game engine. Model vertices now have the lighting direction as well. The fragment shader, we did change um, like the name of the radiance scalar. We should actually introduce one here. And we scale the PBR of the uh, lights. And then we use the constant of 16 for that. 
In the render buffer, we now set the lighting direction from the model vertices to the render vertices. So that's kind of like our in-between shuffling uh, stage. The OpenGL render engine now has one more attribute because it has to pass the light in direction. In the state manager, the OpenGL state manager, we now uh, fill the buffer lighting direction vertex properties. So that's going to the vertex shader. And then in the render vertices here, you can see that our data layout has changed. We now add a int range vector for lighting direction. We had to update the vertex size and we have a new setter for setting up that lighting direction. Let's uh, disable texturing one more time so that we can actually see the light in effect. Check out the lighting on this. It's never looked this good. Like it's not perfect, but it's so, so good. Check it out, these metals, like the way that they are reflecting. I was really amazed that this worked first try. It was an insane idea and it actually works. So instead of having to wait like uh, weeks to show you, I can now show you immediately. Time-lapse mode, check it out. For a real comparison, add a way to disable while the game runs. Yeah, I don't want to do with, with bulls or anything, so what I want to do is this. We can do half of the screen with and half of the screen without, and then we can just compare. Artificial light radiance, so if... if gl frag cohort dot x is smaller than 960, we do it. Okay, so we don't see the light reflection now, but we do see it. See it? It's at the half, halfway point of the screen. Check it out. Check the difference. Indoors. What? You can probably also see the difference on the dudes. See the difference in lighting? The directionality? Check it out on this man. Check this out. On the metallics, it's just another layer of like reflection going on. And his face, check out his face. So, mission accomplished. This is exactly what I wanted to achieve. Just amazing shading all around. Here, check it out. We have some light reflecting on the grass here. Woohoo! Oh, check it out, check it out. Screenshot, screenshot. Can we take a look inside? Oh, why does this look like an actual building? Come on. I mean, this looks like, check out the plant pot. Whoa, did do you, what? See, did you see the lights turn on there? What, what, did you, what? Oh man, this is so good, this is so good. I'm amazed at that we actually implemented this in a single day, like going from no dynamic specularity to implementing it and it looking this good, it's just amazing. There's probably a few bugs that I need to pick out. The way I would debug this is by uh, using the normals in the world. So here you can see like the, um, the normals in the world of all of the materials. Um, th these are used for how light is calculated. But of course you don't have to stop there. You can just say vertex lighting direction. Let's go. And this is like what the game thinks, the direction of the light is. And as you can see, there's a dark spot here. Well, you would kind of expect the light to be pointing towards that lantern over there. The colors around this lantern otherwise are looking pretty good, except for this dark spot over here. So why is this spot dark? It's something that we can uh, like try to figure out for the future. Mm.